when we filmed, I chose a location that has a background that doesn't really move around too much. I also look for an area where there's lots of little details. These are gonna make it much easier for the program to track. Um, and you try to keep the same frame roughly and it makes it a lot easier. And I have my friend here to provide scale for the object that we're gonna be bringing into the scene. The next step is we're inside of Adobe After Effects and I open up this uh, window here called the Tracker. Now what the tracker does is lots of power in this thing, but what I mostly want to use it for is to track where the camera is inside of our scene. And once we have our camera tracked, uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna scan over your footage. It's gonna look for where the points are. And when you're done, you'll get these little X's all over the place. And if you play it back, these are going to be your successfully tracked points. These are all areas that you're able to attach three-dimensional data to three-dimensional animations. And it's important that you get really long tracks, ones that stay in the frame for like the majority of the time. Otherwise, you'll need to use different footage. Move our cursor in between three points and it's gonna create this little target. Now this target is going to change the angle of what it thinks it's looking at. It's trying to guess kind of what it thinks the angle of everything is. And so right here, I like the floor plane to be kind of set right here. So we can click this point and if we right click on it, we can create a solid and a null and a camera. Let's do a solid and a camera. And that's gonna make this little marker here. And if we play our animation back, this should stay pretty much fixed in that spot, which is gonna be really helpful um, when we start bringing in more animation into the scene. Um, but yeah, so that is kind of how this technique works. It works with high contrast points. You wanna make sure that you get as much detail in the frame as possible. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad day. Uh, no motion blur. It does awful if you have a lot of blurring motion. You can always add motion blur to your footage later for realism, but when you're trying to get something successfully tracked, you have to have it be a pretty high uh, shutter speed, which may, it seems like your footage is working out really well. I'm doing some motion tracking renders now. Put these uh, colored blocks here as placeholders for where the objects might be, but um, it's, looking, it's looking accurate. These are all seem to be working out right now, so I think it's gonna come out really cool. Thank you again for uh, helping me shoot these. Okay, so now I kind of have like a sense of scale of how large the object is gonna be. So we can move into the next step, which is what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this After Effects file and go up to the top here and go to File, uh, Export. And then we're gonna choose a, uh, a very different one here. It's a Maxon Cinema 4D Exporter. Go ahead and click that. It's gonna probably give you a warning. Um, just hit, just hit okay, it's okay. Everything's gonna be okay. And you're gonna save your Cinema 4D file to the place that you have. I'm gonna call this raw underscore uh, tracking, or raw track. And I'll save this to my uh, tracking folder that I have in my movies and go ahead and hit save. Great, we're opening up Cinema 4D. I'm using R17 for the current version. If you did everything uh, correctly, you should see something like this inside of Cinema 4D now. And if you hit play, you'll see that this is now moving these objects in a three-dimensional space inside of the kind of the main user interface of the program. So um, yeah, you can kind of see your different objects are gonna be placed here, which is great. So now um, let's bring in our footage into After Effects, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our footage before we did any cool motion tracking, we're just gonna take the boring old footage. So I'm just gonna make a new comp from our selection. So it's just our plain old footage, right? I'm just kind of scrubbing through the timeline here and we can kind of just see it playing. And what we need to do is we need to convert this from a movie into a sequence of JPEGs. JPEGs are the, I guess, the more common images that you'll see on the internet. So to do that, we're just gonna go to File, export, get that focus in there. We're gonna go file, export, and then add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. Hold on, I'm having troubles getting focus on here. There we go. This is a Adobe Media Encoder, and we're gonna change this from an H.264 to a JPEG. Now by default, it's gonna automatically detect that this is a sequence of, the, of JPEGs, so it just says that, which is great. Uh, and we could just kind of just double check where this is going. So I'm just gonna change the source to kind of match up where my existing tracking went. So I'm just gonna make it right here in a new folder. And I'll just call this um, uh, JPEG sequence, just JPEG seek. And we'll go ahead and hit create. Wonderful, so we're in our uh, images. We'll go ahead and hit save. 
Great, and then we're just gonna hit play. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna look at every single frame in our video and just turn it into a sequence of JPEGs. Might take a few minutes, so definitely take a little break, um, uh, have fun, and I'll be right back. Okay, as soon as this is done completing, we will open up the sequence of JPEGs into Cinema 4D as a texture. Let's go in three, two, one. Cool, so it's done. We can always check on it by checking the link. And then look at that. It made a bunch of different JPEGs that if we kind of hit the down arrow, you can see these are the different frames of our video, which is perfect. So it just converted our video into how many JPEGs? Let's see, a lot, a lot of JPEGs. Oh, about a thousand? Oh, no, 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 a thousand, like 300 or so. Kind of a lot, but great, they're all JPEGs. So we gotta remember the name, it's the JPEG sequence. And we're gonna dump right back into Cinema 4D. I'm gonna create a new texture down here by clicking, double clicking in the materials and it opens up right here. I'm gonna double click on that. This is our material editor. And what we wanna change here is our color. So we go to our color, then we go to our texture and we hit the little arrow thingy. We're gonna load an image, even though, you know, it's a, it's a sequence of images. And I saved mine into the movies folder. So just give it a second. Okay, so we're gonna go into the movies. Tracking, nope, dang it, wrong one, it's Steven Universe thing. Uh, tracking right here, JPEG sequence. And you're just gonna select the very first one, the JPEG. You don't need to, you don't need to grab all of them. Um, I, I, Cinema 40 has a fix for that, so just go ahead and hit open. It's gonna say, this image is not a search path, do you wanna create a copy? I think you're supposed to hit no, even though it looks like you hit yes. Now, you have this here, and you're like, great, I'm done, right? So you go back to your copy, hit play, and nothing happens, right? You don't see your footage. So what we need to do is do a few more little tweaks, so stick with me here. This part gets a little technical. You're gonna jump first into the, uh, the, the, the name of the texture. It opens up, up, it opens up this panel, and with these three different tabs, we're gonna go to the animation tab and choose the timing to be a range and then we're going to tell it to calculate what the end frame should be. So we'll go ahead and calculate. And so it just decided what, um, that's like the first name of the JPEG sequence and this is the last JPEG sequence. Um, you're almost done. Now we go back. One more thing you gotta do is you gotta change the editor and say, yo, I want this to animate in my preview. And you're like, great. So now we can close that out. Again, we hit play and look, nothing happens because there's one more step. You gotta create a background layer. So to do that, up here in the top, we press this little button. Oops. If we press and hold down the floor button, we're often given this little background uh, object. And we click the background object and we have a new background. And we can apply this texture to our background by clicking it, dragging it, and placing it right onto our background layer. Press and hold down this and choose the background option. And it makes this little uh, you know, rectangle of your background. And then we can drag our texture onto that background. And now if we scrub through the timeline, we'll place all of our tracked points with just the object that we want to have in the scene. And so this is a, a model that we had made by uh, Fuck Render. So we're doing a little collaboration with this crystal here. And uh, I made this little transparent texture. We can just throw it on this thing and delete any other old textures. And so it looks invisible, but if we render it out, we're gonna get this kind of translucent but reflective uh, jewel and now we got to work on making the lighting look more natural Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to get the textures inside this thing to look more realistic And one way we can do that is by rendering what's called a sky around the scene and uh, normal I forgot to take a photograph of a, uh, of a, I don't know, a 360 photograph you're supposed to do a 360 photograph and you can use that as the data But we're gonna have to wing it. So what we'll do is we'll create a new sky object so you're just gonna see everything is getting surrounded. And we're gonna use our video as the sky object. And if we were to play the video, you'll see that it's gonna use the light from around there to reflect into here. But unfortunately, it also kind of destroys our background footage of our main shot. So while the reflections are gonna be more accurate now, we're gonna lose some of that data. So what we gotta do is do a compositing tag on that layer. So we select our sky, we go to tags, go to cinema 4D tags, 
and then we choose compositing. This is like the secret. And in the compositing, what we want to do is we want to make sure that this, this sky is not actually seen by the camera. So we're just going to uncheck that. There we go. So now it's going to render the light from it into here to make the reflections more um, realistic, but we're not going to have our image ruined by it. So in other words, it's very helpful. Next thing we're going to do is match the lighting. So I'm just going to make a brand new light and we're going to switch to a top view maybe. Oh, that's a side view. This is a top down view. Our light is over here. So the sun, uh, we can't really see where the sun is, but I think it was like kind of up over here a little bit and we got to make sure that it's um, definitely taller than the crystal. So let's put the sun way up top, way up there. And then in our light settings, we need to tell it to cast some shadows. We'll do some soft shadows first and we'll play with it. And we also need them to cast the shadows onto something because right now we don't actually have a floor. So let's turn back on one of our tracking points from earlier. Uh, which one did we use for the floor? There we go. And I'm gonna take this image and just, uh, we're just gonna scale it up really just to however large we want. And in order to make sure that we don't see this, because right now if we render it, we're going to have lots of problems. We get a shadow, you know, emitting onto here, but we see it. So what we, gonna, what we need to do is project a frontal image of our video again onto the floor. So let's go ahead and place the video onto the floor. But you're like, oh no, the angle's all weird. So what we need to do is change the, um, the UV mapping of the floor now. So we go to our layer and change the UV mapping of that layer, uh, if we select our texture to front. Oh, did not do it. My bad, uh, to frontal. And by switching that to frontal, I'll just show you off and on. Uh, by default, it was set to cubic or flat. Nope, my line, spherical. Okay, there's lots of ways that you can interpret this image, but we're just gonna choose frontal so that it's like a straight up front facing material. And so what this does is it allows us to kind of preserve our shadows and our scene, and it starts to look more realistic. That's all, you know, we're trying to go for a realism look. And so now we kind of got this scene going on. Let's see what happens if she interacts a little bit closer with the object. Sweet. And uh, I might want to make this shadow darker because this is kind of, I mean, maybe it would be glowing like that, but I actually imagined it would have a shadow. So one thing we could do is probably change the translucency so that maybe we make it a little bit less um, transparent. So go to the transparency brightness and just decrease it a little bit. So now it's going to be a little bit more matted, a matted down crystal, and that also makes the shadow a little bit darker. Um, that's more like a... Now, actually, I don't, I don't like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that back. We're gonna crank it back up. Maybe I'll make the shadow a little bit less shiny or something, or more shiny. Let more light pass through it. And let's also rotate the crystal. So I'm gonna grab the crystal here, go to frame zero, choose our crystal, go to our coordinates, and we got a Y rotation that we can work off of. Hope that will look weird. Don't want to do that one. I want to do one along. Nope, that one not as as well. We want to rotate here. Yeah. So I'll just set a keyframe at the beginning of time, and then we'll go to the end of the animation and around frame 385. Let's have this thing rotate uh, maybe 720, just two times. Ought to look cool. Okay, so this is the fun part. We're starting to render out um, some footage, and what you'll notice is I removed the top half of the frame. Now that actual black area here is going to be transparent, and this is gonna allow us a lot of flexibility when we merge this footage back with its original version inside of After Effects. You can kind of just see like what, you know, little details that we have going on here. I'm really liking the way the reflections are coming out on these crystals. So having that background separated allows me to light the background separately from the subject, 
is how I get this glow. Whoa, Without that, that, everything would glow with those like light beams on the top and it would Whoa, look weird. What is that? So here it is with just the light beams, Whoa, no object. What is that? I wouldn't be able to do this if, um, if it was all Whoa, part of one giant flat layer. You have to separate the layers. Whoa, what is that? To get the lighting to look even better on our subject, what we need to do is rotoscope. So I like to use the rotoscoping tool here, the roto brush. So we have it selected, and what we do is we kind of just, and we're just going to draw kind of on the subject, at least the parts of the subject that we want to have the lighting be impacted by. Okay, so it kind of crops it out. Now, if we want to deselect that area, we would hold Option, and then kind of paint over it, and then it will subtract that from our selection. Same idea here, I'm going to hold Option, subtract that area and then you get to see a, an effect right there so you can already see how the subject's getting s separated from the frame and then what we can do is kind of just move forward or we can hit play or spacebar and see how the subject is being rotoed now now it's okay in this case for the roto to be kind of rough um, at least for my purposes uh, we just need the we need her to be a little bit separated from the background, and it looks like we lose the roto right around this frame here. So what we got to do is go to that frame and then redraw what we want to have in our selection. Great, and then option. Subtract and subtract. Step is a little tedious, but I Whoa, went through every single that? frame. I went through every single frame and rotoscoped the subject out very roughly. Uh, what rotoscoping is, is it's when you separate the background from an object. And so um, this is gonna allow us to light her in accordance with the way the crystal is spinning in front of her, because the light should be different on her. It shouldn't be even and consistent like it is Normally, so we got a rotoscope route. She is. And it's okay if it's rough. That the character is masked, we can have light affect just her as the subject and not the rest of the scene. And so as we play forward, this is gonna add a lot more realism to the shot because we have that mask. And we'll still need to animate it uh, every once in a while, every few frames, we'll need to move this mask. I only want the purple light to really be in the front of her face. I'm gonna change this to a off and final resolution so you can see the render there. And so what we'll do is as we go through the video, we'll need to move that mask so that the front of her face is always kind of placed into that purple. Like right here, I might even move it a little bit further back. And I might even take one of these frame, uh, one of these points here and move it all the way down Oops, we're getting a hard line right there, so maybe we'll just bring it up. And so you'll see that this thing kind of animates with her uh, to reveal purple, purplish color. And it's not going to be perfect. I'm not trying it to be. Once I'm done with the general positions, and the result that we get is we get some purple light that only exists on the subject, which is very useful for kind of making this seem like it's having a, a larger impact on the environment than it actually was. That's pretty much the whole process. Um, start to finish, you know, you guys start off with getting a nice tracked footage. You want to track it in After Effects, then you're going to export that tracking data right out of After Effects into Cinema 4D. That's where you'll do your 3D modeling, your sculpting, your positioning of objects, your lights, your textures. And then when you're done with that, you're going to export ideally just the objects from Cinema 4D and bring them back into Adobe After Effects to composite the 3D objects onto the uh, original footage. And that's where you can do some lighting adjustments to the footage, and then you combine the two, add some music, and you're done. Thank you so much for watching Creativity with DA3 Live, and let me know if this tutorial was helpful. I'm gonna be doing a lot more visual effects that we're gonna combine with 
real, real world footage. So I uh, look forward to that. And thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.